public declaration of their faith. Like I mentioned before, I don't believe tonight, amen, when people get saved is the only time there is rejoicing in heaven. I believe when people get baptized, that the angels rejoice, that heaven rejoices. And tonight, listen to me, the church ought to rejoice because it is a wonderful and a powerful, powerful thing. Tonight, we want to look at what I've called the beauty of baptism. I'm going to look at it for the life of an Ethiopian eunuch. He has no name. He doesn't need one. But he's forever in scripture to show us, I believe, the beauty of baptism. Acts 8, 35 to 39. Let's read. The Bible says, then Philip, who's here with us tonight, opened his mouth and began, beginning at the, this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see here is water. What hinders me being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Verse 39. Now, when he had come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Hallelujah. Can we pray tonight and ask God to bless the preaching of his word? Father, we thank you tonight for all you're going to do in this place. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, Father God, for Brock and Brittany. We thank you, Lord, tonight for all you're doing in this church in their lives. I'm asking God tonight for anyone who's not saved. God tonight, as the eunuch went away rejoicing, I pray they would know the joy of salvation. God, that they would commit themselves to you. God, they would respond to your call by the Holy Ghost. Uh, Father, tonight I'm praying again for the church. Speak to the church tonight. Oh God, let's continue to grow in your word. I pray, Lord, your preparation of our lives. Uh, and God, all that would take place, Father, tonight and onwards, to you be all the glory, the praise, the dominion forever and ever. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and all God's people said, uh, amen and amen. I want to look first of all tonight at the beauty before us. The beauty before us. Tonight, baptism is beautiful. And it is beautiful in regards to the believer. Now, I'm not saying tonight baptism is for beautiful people. Otherwise, how can you explain Carl tonight? Amen. I'm on, I love you, Carl, by the way. Don't worry. But tonight, it is a beautiful picture of what has happened in the heart of a person who trusts in Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. I believe tonight it meant the most beautiful and the most wonderful thing that ever happened in this church doesn't take place in that pool. I believe tonight it meant the most beautiful and the most wonderful thing that happened in this church, amen, doesn't happen in this building. I believe tonight the most beautiful thing and the most powerful thing that happened in this church does not even happen in this altar. I believe tonight it meant the most beautiful thing and the most powerful thing that happens in this church uh, happens in the human heart uh, of a man or a woman, a boy or a girl who accepts Jesus as their Lord and their only Savior tonight. That is the most beautiful, that is the most attractive, and that is the most powerful thing that can happen to an individual tonight. Because listen to me tonight, salvation is a matter of the heart. Church, you cannot see it in somebody's eyes. Just like you see that their eyes are blue or gray or brown tonight, amen. You cannot even hear it really in somebody's speech because people can say what they want to say tonight, amen. But God has left a wonderful picture for us. He has left a portrait, if you will, of the work of what we call the new birth, and it is pictured in baptism. Now tonight, there is so much confusion today when we speak about baptism. So much debate about several things. There's the debate or the confusion regarding the importance, or like many young people when it comes to treating their homework, the unimportance of baptism. There's confusion and debate regarding the essential to baptism regarding salvation tonight. Is it important to a salvation or not? People wonder tonight, amen, is this something that is done immediately? 
Or like my sister, amen, back in the day, Janet Jackson said, let's wait a while, amen, that you, there is something, amen, that we do after, amen, or we have to wait a while before we do so. It is something tonight that babies do, or is it like only adults only? Is it something, amen, that you pour on people's head, you sprinkle over their body, or is it immersion? Tonight, all these questions, I believe, can be answered emphatically in our text. So let's consider tonight keeping things beautiful because I want to look very quickly tonight at five important facts regarding baptism that I believe tonight keep it beautiful. The first fact is this. I believe baptism is a symbol, not a sacrament. It is a symbol. It is not a sacrament. Sacrament by definition means of receiving the grace of God and it is something we do as a religious ritual that, that, that shows that we, are, that we are saved, that we are, that we are born again, that it's something that, that we do as a ritual to, that, we, that we have received the blessing of salvation. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that there are seven sacraments, baptism, communion, holy communion, confession, marriage, holy orders, and the anointing of the sick. And I have a serious problem with that. Number one tonight, church, that we don't understand, grace tonight is something that is not, uh, uh, that happens by outward symbol tonight. Uh, grace tonight is not, amen, uh, uh, some, some religion, some ritual tonight. Uh, grace tonight, amen, is something better uh, that it is necessary for salvation uh, because the Bible tells us tonight, church, you and I are not saved by works. Uh, we are saved by the grace of God tonight. Grace tonight, amen, is the blessing of God. It is freely given to those who do not deserve it tonight. Otherwise, it would not be grace. Second of all, tonight, amen, of all the things, amen, that Jesus showed us by way of exampleship or by way you could use of a sacrament tonight, there are only two that he partook in tonight, and that is our communion and water baptism. And both, amen, he led in the exampleship. In other words, tonight, he demonstrated, amen, this is how it should be done. This is what it should be done. In other words, tonight, amen, he's telling us to do something tonight that he himself has already done. See, some believe tonight that this act of baptism is what saves you. But in verse 37 of our text, the Bible says, then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And the Ethiopian you didn't answer that said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So we see tonight, amen, here is a man who believes, then he's baptized. We see in the very birth of the church, uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, uh, the Bible says, then they, uh, then, and they that gladly received his word, this is after Peter preached, that uh, we're baptized, uh, and the same day, 3,000 were added up. Uh, in, uh, onto them uh, about sorry uh, on the same day uh free uh they were added onto them uh, about three thousand souls so we see first of all uh, there was a receiving them then amen there was a baptism there was a believing them then there was a baptism act 16 uh, we find the philippian jailer uh, the bible tells us uh, Paul uh, is with this man uh, and he's speaking to the philippian jailer and the man asks paul what must i do to be saved now Paul is going to answer this whole issue. And tonight, amen, this is something tonight uh, that's going to be written and recorded for all of eternity. And Paul re replies in verse 31, he says, and they, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and you shall be saved uh, and your household. And if you read your Bible, you find that later on, this man uh, is baptized. And I've said all of that to say this tonight, church. Uh, baptism is a symbol. It is not a sacrament. Now, what does it symbolize tonight? It symbolizes the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here is somebody tonight, uh, they have been saved, they have been born again, they have given their life to Christ. Uh, and that next uh, uh, step tonight, uh, the next order of business you can say uh, is for that person uh, to be baptized. I want to ask you a question tonight, church. Uh, why do you bury somebody? To kill them? Or is it because they're already dead? Why do you put a soldier in a uniform to make him a soldier? Or is he already a soldier tonight? Why do you put on a wedding ring tonight to make somebody married? Or are they married tonight? Why do we baptize people today in this pool? To save them or because they have been saved? Tonight, listen to me, church. What will happen in this pool tonight is a symbol 
not a sacrament. Second of all, tonight, baptism is for believers and not babies. Nowhere in scripture would you find a baby being baptized. It, it is not there. If you find it, I'll give you my car. Some of you go be looking very good. Right? Some of you take, take your Bible and begin to write it on there, try to print it. It is simply not there. The Bible says tonight, amen, eh, that you have to believe with all your heart. And listen, the last time I checked, babies tonight cannot believe with all their hearts. In fact, tonight, babies cannot even say, I believe with all my heart. It is a decision of the individual. And as a baby or an infant tonight, amen, that decision is taken away from you by your parent because tonight, amen, you cannot make that decision yourself. And I'm talking to babies tonight like babies understand me. They don't understand me. Now, I believe tonight that babies and small children are safe, but they're not saved. I'll say that again. Babies and small children are safe, but they're not saved. King David has a baby. The baby is sick. You know the Bible tonight. The Bible tells us David wept. David fasted, David prayed for this baby, David cried out to God, David lay on the floor, amen, and crying out to God, weeping, God have mercy, God save this baby, God move upon the baby. If you know your Bible tonight, you know the baby died. Baby died and David fixes up himself, washes, sits down and begins to eat and his servants are wondering, what's going on, David? And David said, listen, when the baby was alive, there was a chance that he could live. But now the baby is dead. There's nothing I could do. I can't, I can't, I, 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 he can't come to me, but I can go on, they go to him. And tonight, amen, he's making a statement tonight, church. I believe, amen, of the character of our God. He says tonight, amen, the Bible teaches that any young one who dies under the age of accountability tonight uh, passes through, amen, you could say the cradle of safety uh, directly into the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and I thank God tonight, especially tonight, when you think about the amount of precious babies tonight who have died because of abortion tonight. They've gone straight into the presence of God. They weren't saved, but they were safe. It was C.H. Spurgeon, who I like very much. He's called the Prince of Preachers. One day in a public debate, a man is debating Spurgeon regarding infant baptism. The man began to lay down the ground rules. It's going to work like this. I'm going to give you my scripture regarding why I believe it is biblical for infants to be baptized. And you can, you can, you can give others and give me your scripture why you believe that Infants should not be baptized and let people decide what that, how things are going to go. And Spurgeon goes, not a problem, it's fine. The man goes, okay, here it goes. I'm going to give you my scripture that I believe that supports infant baptism. And the man goes, here it is. Here it is. To suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is of the kingdom of God. Spurgeon goes, okay, here is my scripture. It's found in Job chapter 1 verse 1. There lived a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. The man goes, what kind of nonsense is this? What does that have to do with infant baptism? Spurgeon says about the same as your scripture has to do with infant baptism. See, tonight, infant baptism, I've not thought about this until recently, but infant baptism tonight is a wicked thing. It is a wicked man-made doctrine that results in men and women developing a false sense of security, thinking that their child is saved when the child is actually really safe. But when that child becomes an adult, that child becomes a teenager, that child is no longer safe. And it's horrible. Because I've spoken to people who told me, well, I was christened or I was sprinkled and all this, and I'm saved because of all this, and it's sad. Number three tonight, baptism is by plunging under and not by pouring on. The Greek word for baptized is the word baptizo. 
with without exception always means to immerse. Verse 39 says, they came up out of the water. The Lord Jesus sets the example of baptism when he was immersed and he came out of the water. If you know anything about the baptism of Jesus, we're going to read it very soon. Jesus was not sprinkled. Jesus, they didn't take a jar of water and pour it, pour it on him tonight. And you may say tonight, what, what, you know, what, what, what's really the big issue tonight? Uh, it's just a symbol. You say it's just a symbol. Uh, why are you going on? Why are you making a big deal out of nothing? Uh, what is it, what, 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 how, it does it really matter what is done, whether it's sprinkled or poured or whatever it is tonight? But the fact that it is a symbol involving the Lord Jesus Christ is no less exactly the issue. Because when you look at the Old Testament tonight, it teaches us anything, if, if it teaches us anything at all, it teaches us that Jesus tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, uh, our God tonight takes symbols very seriously. Here is Moses. Moses' assignment in life was to bring deliverance to the children of Israel and lead them into the promised land. That is what he was born for. That, that, that was his assignment, full stop. You get those people out and you take them into where I want them to be. He was not born to be a prince of Egypt. He was born to be a leader of God's people. And here he is, he's doing a good job and finally gets them out and he finally begins to take them um, uh, through the wilderness uh, into the promised land and they finally come to a place uh, where God tells them, listen to I want you to I want you to speak to a rock uh, and you speak to the rock and it's going to give them water. They've been murmuring, they've been complaining, they've been stressing this man out uh, and God says, all right, I'm going to give them some water. I want you to go to this rock, speak to the rock and the, the rock is going to produce water. When Moses gets to the rock and Moses is frustrated, Moses is vexed. Moses looks at them and tells them, you dirty, stinking rebels. You want water. And takes his rod and he strikes the rock. And you know from that account tonight, from that action, God says, you're not going to the promised land anymore. You ain't doing that anymore. They may, they may, be, they, they may, they may stress you out. They may vex you like they do me, but it's still my people. And God says, you are not, you, you're not going in. You can imagine Moses, he's all kind of, he's kind of vexed and disappointed after all those years of leading them. And God says, he's not going to the promised land. But here's it tonight. I mean, the reason why God said no tonight, that rock tonight uh, was a symbol of Jesus Christ. Read it yourself. The rock was Christ. And God says, you will not go in. And tonight I'll say this tonight, no one will go into heaven. Trust in the baptism will take them there. Because this means that believers go to heaven, not people who are baptized. If you don't believe me, look at a thief in the cross. This man could not get baptized. God had the power to take him off the cross and make him baptized. But this man did not get baptized. But he believed. And because he believed, Jesus said, there you'll be where with me in paradise, in heaven. Number four tonight, baptism is necessary for submission and not for salvation. I'll say it again. Baptism is necessary for submission and not for salvation. Let me share with you a verse that is used, that is support by people who try to tell you that baptism is what saves you. There's, there's several, but I'll just only use one because of time. In Mark chapter 16, verse 16, it says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. He who believes and is baptized is saved. So people will say, can you see that baptism is what saves you? And what they do many times is they only quote half of the, the scripture. They take its scripture out of context because the emphasis of the verse tonight is believing, not baptism. And I stand confidently and say that because tonight the person who is condemned tonight is not the person tonight that is not baptized. The Bible says you must believe. It is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ you are saved tonight. And the verse I believe also assumes that a person who has been saved naturally wants to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in believer's baptism because tonight, church, it is important for submission, not for salvation. Now, every single one of us, we all have opinions, and opinions is a good thing, like Pastor Greg says. It is a good thing tonight. 
but you need to be very careful about those people who lift out of context. What do I mean tonight? Do you know tonight in the Bible tonight, the Bible says that there is no God. It's in the Bible. It says there's no God. If you read Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, it says there is no God. But what's the context? The context is of a fool telling you that there is no God. People are taking texts and twisting it. And, and, and just, just the other day, I, I saw a debate between a, a Muslim and a Christian. And the Muslim was saying that Muhammad was in the Songs of Songs. The Songs of Songs is about two lovers. Let me not get, skip our thing. I'm I, 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 like, somebody's smoking some good crack, but never mind. It's like, it's just, of all the places you think Muhammad is in the Bible, he's in Songs of Songs. Okay, let me live in the day. But anyway, to call a long story short, the Mus Muslim got waka. It was bad. It was, it, was, it was bad. Amen. So here's Jesus tonight. Jesus is saying tonight, if you're serious about him, you make your decision to follow him a public one. And the Bible's model for this is baptism. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 14 to 15, it says these words, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by John. Now listen to me. There are so many people there at that time. It wasn't just Jesus and John. You read the, read the context of it. There's people, because people were getting baptized by John. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Jesus tonight set the example. Now the question is this, did Jesus need to be baptized? No. But what he was doing tonight, church, he was setting an example for us. He was submitted himself as an example, so you and I would submit ourselves. In fact, if you know a little bit of Bible history tonight, you know in the first century tonight, you were not persecuted for being saved. You were persecuted for being baptized. The moment you get, the moment you are going to get baptized, people will be standing by the river or wherever it was, or they'll be standing there and they begin to jeer and they begin to curse. Sometimes they begin to throw things. And the moment you come out of that water straight away, Straight away, you get you be persecuted and sometimes even killed because you made a public stand that you want to follow Jesus tonight. Church, it is important to if showing God that you are serious when you get baptized, and the more reason you can come up with to not get baptized tonight really shows you more reason why you should get baptized because it shows that you are serious. When we were in South Africa, there was a lady. A young lady that got saved. Um, her name was Amanda, still in church. And Amanda was afraid. She was petrified of water. I mean, I don't know how she watched. Petrified of water. But not, Amanda, if you see this, forgive me, sis. But it, you know it's true. But petrified of water. Petrified. Petrified. So much so that when we baptized her, I kid you not. When, when she got in the water, she was screaming. I mean, <laughs> And the water wasn't cold. It was nice and warm like that one is. Brittany, you can put your hand in there. It's nice and warm. You're screaming. I mean, top of her voice, like, screaming, sinner. And I, uh, upon your confession in the face, I'm not baptizing in the Father. And I went, as soon as we did this, and she came up, I kid you not, she's like, boing. She literally bounced out of the water. I mean, just jumped out, leaped out, bang. Now, what was powerful about this is everybody knew Amanda was afraid of water. I mean, everybody, her family members, anybody who knew her, this girl is afraid. If there's a phobia for water, find it. That was Amanda. Afraid of water. But listen to me. She proved she was serious about Jesus because she got baptized in water. She proved it. Number five, I'm going to pray. I believe tonight from scripture, baptism should be, it ought to be done immediately after salvation. It ought to be, not sometime after. 
Now, there's nothing wrong per se. You don't have to per se, but it ought to be done immediately after, as soon as possible. In fact, before I go on tonight, I'll say this. I believe some people would be serving God today and saved if they had done it straight after. It really would have. Tonight, baptism is the next step in obedience after you get saved. In fact, it is the first of many steps of obedience. And I believe tonight, amen, when you get saved, the hard part is already done. This is simple. This is my kids would say when they're smaller, easy peasy Japanesey. Simple. This is, this is as easy as it can get. The hardest part is when you pray to receive Christ, your Lord and Savior. That was the hard part. This is so simple. That's, that's, listen, when you pray to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, God did for you what you could not do for yourself. When you get baptized, you now do for God what he wants you to do for him. That's, this is simple as as can be. So here's the thing. Today, I believe that every, no, not every, but many people, in fact, our generation is what I call long thing people. We're long things in so many areas of life and not much more than baptism. Because when it's time to get baptized, people say, I'm not sure. I'm not ready. I need to prove myself. Well, in our text, this man fresh just got the gospel just heard the gospel just got saved and in acts 8 36 he said this words now when they went down the road they came to some water and the eunuch says see here is water what hinders me for being baptized as we would say back in the day before i got saved he said here's some water can we go let's do it now let's get baptized i'm ready He's not saying, you know, let me go and deliberate. You don't go and think about this. Well, you know, the Bible says, you know what, uh, you, know, but you better count the cost. Right? He's not coming with all these excuses you and I come up with. He's ready, steady, let's go. You know, sometimes you hear people in the church saying, you know what, we shouldn't, you know, they, 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 you, know you shouldn't baptize them yet. Let me just, let's just come and check them out. Just make sure they got the goods. Make sure they're ready. Like you were. Right? Because then like any time you see someone being baptized in the Bible, it is immediately after salvation. Do your own Bible studies there. Anytime somebody got baptized, they, they had just recently got saved and they're ready. To, I, I, listen, I, I've, I, I know people, the moment they got saved and they heard it, 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 about baptism in the Bible, they said, Pastor, take me home. They, come, they go home. They went, into, they, they, they run the baths. Baptizing me, I'm ready. And we come up with all these excuses why we can't, why we shouldn't, why we're not ready, why we need to make sure this is right and make sure that is right. The reality is tonight, church, you can watch new converts for a couple of years and still not be really sure whether they did get it or not. If you don't believe me, the amount of people even last week, they thought to myself, am I saved? Am I not saved? I'm not sure. It's time for them to get baptized. If I, if I had, if I, listen, if I, if I had my way, if really, if I had my way, the moment somebody got saved, let's get baptized. Fill up the pool. Let's do it. Let's do it. There's nothing stopping you. There's no requirements. You don't have to go for some 12 month course. You don't have to dress in all white and float all the way down. <laughs> get baptized. Get it done. Don't waste any more of God's good time. Just do what God has told you to do. And the bottom line is this tonight, church. One thing my pastor told me a long, long time ago, when we begin to wonder, should people get baptized early or not, is this. You and I cannot do the job of the Holy Ghost. You can't. Was I ready when I got baptized? Were you? Well, according to the Bible, if you're saved, you are. It's that simple tonight. Tonight, maybe you've been saved for a while. Bonded to the service tonight. 
you've only come to realize the importance of being baptized ASAP. And I believe tonight there's nothing wrong with that because the Bible tells us tonight, to him who knows to do good, but does not do it, to him, it's sin. One of the most beautiful sights that I have in my memory was our last baptism. And I'll tell you what was beautiful about the baptism. I think we had, I don't know, how many five or six people standing here got baptized. One of the most beautiful sights I had was Danny. Danny came to church not planning to get baptized. He had no idea, I didn't get baptized, but I don't know what happened. You could have to ask him after service. All of them, they came straight to me, Pastor, I want to get baptized. I go, you sure? Yeah. Have you got any change? You go, no, 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 I won't get baptized. Now, I've seen that before. I've seen that happen in several places. People come, they have no, I'm not going to get baptized. It's gonna, you know, I'm just here, come support my sis, come support my bro. And I'm like, I want to get baptized. I want, I need to, I want to get baptized. And, 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 I, I just say nothing. They just, all of a sudden, they got it. And I tell you this right, right now, that wonder, and that beauty tonight has never lost its power. It is the most beautiful, beautiful sight when somebody realizes, oh God, I'm serious about you. I want to serve you. I haven't got all together, but with your help, I'm going to make it through tonight, amen. We serve a faithful God who's going to help some precious people make it through tonight. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes at this place, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Praise God. Tonight, maybe you're in this building. And I don't know tonight, but God knows and you know tonight. Maybe you're here tonight. And you realize tonight you've been depending upon your christening or your infant so-called baptism for your salvation. That because you were Christian as a child, because water was poured upon you as a young man, a young woman tonight, you look at that as a sign that you are right with God. Tonight, can I declare to you, you need to be born again? Because all you got that day was wet. You need to be saved from your sins. Then you get baptized. You need to accept Christ as your savior and your only way to heaven. Then you can get baptized. You need to realize that you are falling short of the glory of God and cry out to mercy. Then you get baptized. Because as important as things is, As powerful as this day is, as all that would transpire in this altar, as all that will take place in the pool, the most important thing will happen as you make the right decision in your heart that I am a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe he's the Christ, the son of the living God. Tonight, I want him to forgive me of my sins. That is the most powerful and the most beautiful thing that can take place in a human heart. Maybe you're here tonight. You say, Pastor Yusuf, I'm all right with God. I need Jesus. I want to get right with God. Do you think he'll forgive me? Yes, he will. If you humble yourself, put away your pride. Stop worried about what people think and start worried about what God thinks and accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And I want to declare to you tonight, my friend, like this Ethiopian eunuch, you would leave here with joy. Joy unspeakable. When I got saved, I skipped home. Me and my rude boy self, skipped home. God filled me with his joy. Tonight, that joy is in abundance. And he has so much more for you. 
very quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're in this building, you're not right with God, you're not saved, you're not born again, you have not given your life to Jesus. But tonight, the Spirit of God is dealing with you. There is a tugging, there is a restlessness, there is an uneasy in your heart tonight. That is the Holy Ghost calling you. If that's you tonight, say, Pastor, will you pray with me? I want to receive Jesus. Will you do one thing? Just lift your hand up tonight and put it down. Just slip it up and put it down. Don't be embarrassed. God cares about you. God loves you. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine decree. God has seen fit to draw you and bring you here because he loves you and has a purpose for you, has a great destiny for you. But sin lies between you two. And if you turn away from your sins and turn to Jesus tonight, oh friend, tonight you're going to experience something you've never ever experienced before. Forgiveness. Quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're here. Slip your hand up. Where's my hand? Pass the prayer with me. I need Jesus. Or maybe you've backslid. You're away from God. You once li were living for God. Maybe you were raised in a Christian home, in a godly home. Maybe you were once saved as a young man, a young woman. But for whatever reason tonight, you're away from God. Tonight, the Spirit of God is here, and He is calling you to draw near tonight. He's calling you to draw closer tonight. He's calling you to return back to Him tonight. Come on, if that's you tonight, God is calling you to recommit your life. Lift your hand up and put it down. Say, God, here's my hand tonight. I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this for anybody else in this place. I need need you or I'm coming back home to you. Slip your hand up and put it down very quickly. Final time I'm going to say this tonight. Tonight the spirit of God is all over you. You didn't lift your hand before but you want to lift it now. The day I came to church, I didn't come to get saved. I came to just for a friend. They invited me. I thought, right, let me just come with my friends. I had no, no plan. on. I didn't know what saved was. I couldn't even sell spades. But I heard the preacher preach. And my white hands went up and I've never been the same again. Tonight, the spirit of God is here. Final time. You didn't lift your hand up before, but you want to lift it up now. Say, here's my hand, pastor. Pray with me. I need Jesus. Pray with me. I want to return to Jesus. If that's you, lift it up and put it down quickly, up and down. The Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Then I want to speak to God's people tonight. Do you remember your, your salvation? Do you remember your baptism? I remember both. It is the most powerful event that can happen in a person's life. It was more powerful than my wedding. It was more powerful than my children being born. Because I tell you right now, without them, without that salvation, I wouldn't have what I have today. As we come to this altar tonight, let's never lose the beauty of a baptism. As we come to this altar tonight, let's never lose the joy of our salvation. As we come to this altar tonight, the most powerful thing, the most important thing that will happen is decisions that the spirit of God has dropped in your heart that it's time to make. Let's all rise up to our feet tonight, amen. The altar's open. Let's come and find some to pray tonight. Let's come. As God has spoken, we need to obey. As God has dealt with us, we need to reply tonight. Let's come and find somewhere and pray. Find somewhere and speak to our God tonight. Find somewhere and begin to do business with God tonight. The beauty of baptism. It is such a beautiful thing. 